Hey everybody, it's time for another Tony's Tidbits. And today I finally got a my Pixel 6a. Uh, so I've been rocking the Pixel 4 XL for the longest time. And I was tempted to go the Pixel 6 route, but the Pixel 4 XL really held up and I really enjoyed it. But it's starting to show its age. The battery is starting to not hold its charge a lot. So what I have here in this box is my Pixel 6a. Right, brand new, just got it from FedEx. Here it is, the Pixel 6a. And then they also threw in some Pixel Buds um, A. Now, I actually was not looking to get this Pixel 6a. This is actually my first of the A series phones, um, but they, for the pre-order, when I checked, they were offering $300 for the Pixel 4 XL. And I, it was just, it was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. So I, $300 trade-in, plus getting some Pixel Buds A, which I will probably be selling. I already have somebody that's going to take this off my hands. You're talking about 370 ish maybe $400 of trading value which would mean that I'm upgrading for only, you know, 100 to $150 for an upgrade. Tensor, chip, all the specs are, are out there. So it's actually a really nice upgrade uh, for very little money. I will miss on my Pixel 4 the Soli uh, capability, which allows me to do the face unlock. So I'm going to miss that. Um, I am probably going to miss the Google Photos where they have unlimited high res but compressed photos uh, to Google to Google Photos. Now there is a hack out there where you can use a Pixel One which allows unlimited original quality photos and upload that to Google Photos. Uh, I'm considering trying to field a or, original uh, OG Pixel to see if I can um, sync the photos to that device and have that device pretty much be a, a mule to shuttle the photos to Google Photos. But um, I have not had that set up. If I do, I'll definitely make a video about that. But uh, so I plan on unboxing this and then putting on a screen protector with, some, with a case and then I'll give you my final thoughts about it. And then I'll probably follow up this video with like a a few months later what my experience is with the Pixel 6a and I do have the Pixel Pro Pixel Buds Pro coming in so I'll probably have another video of that um, I did have the A if you haven't seen that video I'll probably uh, link it into this particular video as well if you haven't seen that but um, I returned the Pixel Buds A and waited for the Pixel Buds Pro, and then now I got another Pixel Buds A. Luckily, I found somebody that's gonna take this off my hands, so uh, we'll go into the unboxing. Thanks. Here we are with the Google Pixel 6a box. Just got it today. Uh, was in all day training, so I hadn't been able to actually open this, and I've been like so distracted on trying to open this guy, but here it is. And so it has little two little tabs here, so we'll just go ahead and remove those tabs. And then we'll just place it right here. Uh, oh, they're not sticky, so just smooth them out. Pull this guy off, and there it is. Now I opted for the charcoal, so I have a little microfiber cloth here, so I don't want to mess mess that up. And then I'll just pop it down. Okay, so now there is a USB-A to USB-C. This is to help you transfer files or anything you, mean that you may need. Also comes with the USB-C to USB-C cable, which is really nice. So it allows me to uh, hook up two uh, USB-C devices together if I were to transfer the data. Um, that is, uh, here's my Pixel 4. You can see I have of course a USB-C so I can just I can really just hook these up with this cable end to end and it should transfer the data now I'm not going to do that I'm gonna do a cloud backup I'm not going to show you the setup because it's pretty common 
Yeah, everybody knows how to do it, so I won't show you that. Really what I wanted to get to is just what's in the box itself. You see he has a SIM ejector here. That's pretty nice. Um, I don't think any, uh, there's something else in here. Uh, welcome packet, I guess, just some instructions. SIM ejector. Um, Google Tensor, they really marketing this Google Tensor here. And that's it. Now I'll tell you, with the phone, the the weight of the phone in the actual box is equivalent to the phone of by itself, my Pixel 4 XL. <coughs> Excuse me. In fact, I would say that the box, the, the P Pixel 6a in the box is actually lighter than the actual Pixel 4 XL out of the box with a case on. So I think this is going to be really nice. It's going to be really light. And there it is. I got the charcoal version. So I will put on the glass screen protector and that I got in a case and we'll go into that segment. All right, so we're going to, I bought this um, before, uh, right after I pre-ordered the Pixel 6a, I went ahead and bought this Omoton ga glass screen protector. Now I've had this brand for various other devices and it's really has been easy to install and really high quality. It's a uh, tempered glass uh, 9H hardness. So I really was looking forward to having uh, this brand support the Pixel 6a, which they did, so that's awesome. Um, the So I've kept this particular piece of the Pixel 6a on because I don't want any dust getting onto the screen. Um, we will sort of do the alcohol wipe and, and check for dust, but I like to keep this on right until I apply. I have not even booted up this Pixel 6a at all. Um, but I want to make sure that the screen is still pristine, still in a good in good shape. So what I'll do here is I'll get a there's a this is a three pack. So we'll we'll um, we'll keep the rest because of course I have two kids. You can probably hear them in the background, and they like to um, accidentally like take my phone and throw it or. Um, the cool thing is this actually comes with a camera, see there, camera protector, which is uh, from the back. Now I have this on the microfiber cloth because I, I'm immediately going to be putting a case right on uh, the device itself. So I don't want to really mess up the back at all. So I want to make sure that that's still good. We have the pack of guide stickers and dust absorbers and then here we go here's one of them we'll we'll just take out a set here is a set of the um alcohol wipe so the prep wipe there we'll keep that this is to uh clear the bubbles so that'll, that'll be good. We'll keep that. Uh, a set of dust absorbers in, in the guide stickers. So, great. We'll put this back here. Make sure that we keep this in a safe place because I know I'm going to use it in the future. With uh, my two rowdy kids, they're going to be... I'll definitely... Uh, going to be replacing that screen. All right, so let's leave that there. We have our thing. All right. And let's let's just for um you know, to be thorough, let's look at this guy. It says ensure hands are clean and I have these gloves which I'll put on shortly. Create a hinge structure. It says wipe the device screen with a wet wipe. And, and then with the microfiber cloth, clean the remaining dust with the dust absorber to avoid any bubbles. 
we'll use the we'll peel off the back of the screen protector and then um, be sure to not attach the adhesive side we'll put on the screen protector using that hinge and then we'll use this guy to to remove the bubbles and then we will push those levels out so pretty easy to use um, the good thing is the Pixel 6a has a flat screen, not a curved screen. So previously, I know some um, other other screen protectors has a have a has a device or a guide to help you put the the screen on. Well, that's not required necessarily here because the screen is actually flat. Uh, it's a nice to have, but we should be able to still continue to uh, put this on pretty evenly with the hinge. So make sure that the the tab that has the the adhesive is facing down so at this point in time what we'll do is we will remove the actual adhesive here or this this protector so i want to be cautious of that we'll just put it right here just so it's clean oh there is some dust on there so um good thing that we're going to go through this process um, okay that's where it should be I want to make sure that this is clear so I'm going to just lightly lightly there we go and that's that's not required I just want to make sure that I'm placing it in the right spot so there it is looking looking good so far what we're going to do is we're going to take these guide stickers and we're going to place them. And we're going to make sure that they're placed in the right location. Um, I won't say like right location. Let's say just the top and the bottom of the actual of the actual device. So I'm gonna just going to put a sticker right under the camera here. And I'll put another guide sticker at the bottom just so that we cover the whole phone and make sure that we put it in the right place. Now, the trick here, because there is no guide and we want to make sure that this tab is in the right spot. And uh, it actually says here, please peel this off before application. All right, so the, the key is to keep this guy in place. You want to make sure that the camera hole is in the right spot, so that's good. And this is looking good right here. Now, let's see. I want to make sure that this is centered. This is good. This is good. And I am I'm applying a little bit of light pressure. And then I'm going to oh see, the thing is it's so slippery that it is hard to determine where this goes and this is where the guide is really going to help um, so it'd be nice to have a guide so that we wouldn't have to it would take out some of the guesswork so I think this is going to be okay maybe mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's centered. Okay. And then make sure that this is there. We do that. Now, so these, this is good. Make sure that the stickers are there. So far, so good. So, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put it down like that. Make sure it's in the right position I'll do it again just to make sure okay looking good looking good all right so this is the point where you would take this screen protector it's it's a wet wipe basically and we're gonna we're gonna take it and clean the screen gonna make sure that the clean that the screen is really clean and I'm gonna go in broad strokes Make sure it's there, and then out. You don't have to do this, I guess, um, or or go in a particular direction. I just like to make sure that I'm 
pushing any of the dust either to the top or to the side. Leave that there. We'll open this microfiber cloth to make sure that we get any of the different dust off, off of the phone. It appears to be pretty clean. Okay, we'll set this to the side here. And then they have the dust remover. So we want to make sure that we do a good job here on removing any dust. So make sure that you got all of the dust out. And I forgot to wear my gloves, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to put on these gloves. Now, it's not required, but your fingers have oil on it. And if, let's say, you did all of this whole process and you eventually just accidentally touched the screen for some reason. Well, you know what? Your, your, your oils on your hand are going to be on that screen. And it's not going to be nicely done or nicely put on the phone so i put on these gloves just to make sure that i don't put any of the oils on there because you know i don't like i don't like bubbles i don't like bubbles on my devices when i'm putting the screen protector on this is to ensure that that, that doesn't happen so i think i got it i think it's pretty clean now i'll leave that here i'm going to take off this particular screen protector make sure you don't touch the edge of of it okay and then we're just going to plop it on like that it looks good now I have not touched the middle of it which is by design and you can see it's rapidly already covering the device that's great doesn't look like it has any any holes or any potential issues and there it is it's perfect um let's go ahead and just make sure that this is this is there and then we'll take off these stickers real quick so that you can see the device without the stickers on it and it looks pretty clean i think you did a pretty good job there a little bit of bubble here we'll just we'll just do that and then there you go so the screen i haven't even turned this machine on i haven't even turned this device on yet i already have a protective cover on it and then what we'll do is for extra protection First, we'll, and this is, this is the Omoton, again, the Omoton screen protector. And then, oh, I forgot, there's a back to this. So, what we'll do, and I think this one is pretty much, this, again, this is a tempered glass uh, screen protector, and it's supposed to go over here. I'm not sure how to really align this. We'll sort of go through the same process again. So let me go through and clean this part of the glass. We'll use the microfiber and make sure that it's clean and that there's no residue there. We'll, I don't, uh, I've already put on this dust absorber, absorber, but I don't think there's dust on it anyway. So we should be okay there. And then what I'm going to do here is pop out the screen protector and we're going to eyeball this one. Um, let's see. Okay. So here it is. We're going to just eyeball where the sensors are. And this is easily, you can easily take this off. So I'm not too concerned about this. It looks okay. 
we'll just make sure that that's in the right spot. It looks good, centered. Yeah, here we go. So there it is. So that one is installed. Looks nice. It's 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 this is a black bar, and having this on with it being black, it's barely noticeable that it actually has an issue. All right. So the last one that I'm going to do is this Spigen uh, Ultra Hybrid clear case. And so I bought this before, um, I bought this um, right after I bought basically or pre-ordered the device. It's really nice, has some flexibility to it. I like clear cases. This is one of the reasons why I have this on a microfiber is because again, I don't want scratches on the actual device itself. And I want to make sure that everything is still pretty like you just took it out of the box. And so we won't remove the back one because the back one is just uh, there, but we will remove this middle one. Okay. And then what I like to do is sort of like grab it here and then over. And then we'll, I like to do the button side first, it really doesn't matter. And then we'll put the phone in its case. So here it is. You have the glass screen protector on the actual device. You have the protector on the actual uh, camera. And now I have the case on the phone. This phone is light. If I compare it to this Pixel 4, it is super, super light compared to the 4. I mean, of course, the 4 has um, glass back and, and all that stuff, but this this is, this is pretty light, um, I can say. So now that we've had the screen protector and that on, I'll just go ahead and remove the back. And now I like the... I like this case. This case looks like it has a lot of good protection on it. And not only that, but it has, it shows the color. So if you got that sage green or, or um, it would really look nice. I am a fan of all things black. I like the charcoal. I like the, the just black for the Pixel 4 XL, um, which is really nice. So definitely um, I would recommend the screen protector. I just wish it had a guide. This particular case seems like it'll be good. I do have the later case that is Kevlar. So I'll probably do a quick video about that. But so far, so good. And then I'll charge this up and give you some of the final thoughts. All right, it's time for some final thoughts. So the Pixel 6a is definitely a really nice device. Uh, coming in at 350 if you get oh actually not it's actually 450 I believe and then if it if you get the trade-in deals this thing could be an upgrade for just merely 100 to 150 dollars so it makes it a very palatable uh, deal uh, the so it is lighter definitely lighter than the pixel 4 this is the pixel 4 and this is the 6a and you can definitely feel the difference in weight so that's definitely a plus. I don't think that's a negative. Now, I know that a heavier phone may give the perception of a more premium phone, but this one does the job and it has all the premium features that I would like. Now, there are a few things that I wish it had, but we'll go into that in just a little bit. Um, the 120 hertz screen, everybody is complaining about this. It is not an issue. It is very responsive. Um, it is just as fast as my as my Pixel 4 XL. I mean, it's it's really it, I don't even notice it. It actually performs the same as my Pixel 4 XL, at least from my perspective. So I think this 120 hertz screen is uh, is a little bit overblown. The 60 hertz screen does its job. I'm not complaining about it. The screen is bright. The screen is responsive. I've had no issues in it. I've played a few games on it, doesn't seem to be an issue. Now, there's also a really good thing about the Pixel 6 is it has Magic Eraser. So if you want the tensor specific type of um, 
gadgets and widgets and special features that it has for the sensor cord that the Google 6 has. Magic eraser for one, camouflage is another one. Uh, one other thing that I got to try out in beta in my Pixel 4 XL was Google Assistant typing, where you could use Google Assistant to send your text messages and say send and it will send. That's not, they yanked that away from a Pixel 4 XL and put it as an exclusive for the Pixel 6. I'm eager to try it out. Um, I, I do want to say that I spent the night setting this up, so I do have a little bit, like, a few hours of play time with it. Um, the Pixel 6 feels better in the hand. Um, I know it's, uh, I always thought that the Pixel 5 was a perfect uh, size and form factor and this is very close to the Pixel 5 in terms of size so I think for one hand use this is this is a really good size uh, reminds me of the essential phone where it was like all screen and then it had a really good size to it so I really appreciate the sort of smaller phone format um, I like the big phones but when I'm putting it in my jean pocket it just protrudes out or it's not it's very uncomfortable to sit whereas I could see this being in my pocket I would be it would be very portable for me the haptics itself it feels fresh it's, it has better haptics than the pixel 4 um, when I'm playing games or when I'm like uh, texting it the haptics are on point it's really nice the buttons on the side are very clicky you can hear it this very nice, a very tactile feel to it. So I think that they did a really good job at this. Especially if you're going to use it with the case, you can really hear that click. So it's really, really nice. The heat, you know, when I was setting this thing up, people were talking about the heat. I have not gone outside. It's In Texas, it's over 100 degrees right now. But I've not gone outside and taken pictures or taken videos. I would expect it to overheat. My Pixel 4 XL, it overheated. Uh, in the Texas heat while I was taking some some video so I would expect this to perform the same way um, when I was setting this up it was downloading everything from the cloud because I like I like to, to download fresh copies of the app and not transfer anything over from my old device to the new device so I'd like to download it as it was downloading as I was setting up of course it's going to get hot but after that it's fine no no issues with heat at this point in time if it does i'll definitely do a follow-up video but right now uh it's it's expected to have a little heat i mean it is, it is a is it is a phone and it, you are using it you know pretty ext extensively but i had no complaints it's not like burning to the touch or anything like that um one thing i do miss is the face unlock and i hope that in the future google will put the face unlock i know that there were rumors that the Pixel 6 has the capability to do face unlock and they just yanked it out. Maybe they're waiting for the Pixel 7 to put that in. But I do miss having to, to be able to just raise my phone and it unlocks with my face. That was very awesome with the, with the 3D sensor here in the Pixel 4 XL, which I do miss. When, when I'm going into the uh, Pixel 6. Now, the fingerprint, a lot of people were talking about how the fingerprint is slow. I don't see, I don't see any issue with it. I mean, to be honest, you, 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 you press it on and it has this like feedback that says, hey, I accept your fingerprint and it opens and it's not slow. If you're, if you're expecting to just like do something like tap your phone screen, I mean, I, I I would give it a little bit more time and you're able to just hit, 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 um, let's see here, hit the sensor and for it to be able to unlock. Now I've unlocked it here. That's pretty, yeah. So it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really take that much longer. Um, I don't, you know, I don't see it being a problem. I know other reviewers are having either problems or have probably, um, uh, an expectation uh, it is slower than you know the the beloved back screen back of the phone uh, pixel sorry back of the phone fingerprint scanner but this one is not that bad it's not that bad at all um, so I'm 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 pretty happy with it uh, I do miss the face unlock however um, but the face unlock when when COVID-19 happened 
and we were all wearing masks, it's, it was very cumbersome because I would have to remove my mask, unlock the phone, or put in my pattern. So I could understand and appreciate that there's the fingerprint sensor. So when I'm wearing a mask, I really don't need to uh, take off my mask. I can just use my fingerprint, obviously. So that's going to be a plus when we're wearing masks and, you know, there's surges of COVID at the moment. But I wish they had both options. I wish we were able to just either use the fingerprint or have a face unlock so that either or it um, allows you to have access to the phone. So I think that's, I, I think it's fair. I think when we're masking up, the fingerprint is more convenient, but the face unlock when we're not wearing masks is gonna be more convenient. So I think that's fine. The speakers are really good. Um, on par, or if not a little bit better than my Pixel 4 XL. So I actually had to turn this down because the notifications were coming up a little bit too strong. So I turned it down, but the speakers right now, they sound great. I can't wait for the Pixel Buds Pro when I, I'm, I'm gonna get them soon and I'll do a review. I, I can't wait. I hear a lot of good things about the Pixel Buds Pro. So uh, look out for that review. And the other two other things that I missed or I miss about the uh, Pic uh, Pixel 4 XL that I wish was in the 6a was quick charge. So it charges very slowly. Luckily it discharges very slowly so I'm able to get a, a longer battery life with the phone. And also wireless charging. I've, I've adopted a lot of the phones that I've had all the way going from the Nexus 6 had wireless charging. And I do appreciate wireless charging because when I'm when I'm about to go to sleep, I can just set it on the cradle and boom, it's starting to uh, charge. Uh, this does not have wireless charging. I wish it did. Um, I do have the magnetic charging uh, capability or the, the one where you put the USB-C and it has a magnet that will charge the phone. So I'm going to be using that instead. There's some trade-offs. I understand um, wireless charging is going to bring the phone uh, price up. So I'm fine with that. I'll deal with it. I'm waiting out for the Pixel 8, um, unless the Pixel 7 is just going to be amazing, which we don't know yet. Uh, come October, we'll know. So that's my final thoughts on the Pixel 6a. Uh, definitely worth the, the price. It's going to definitely hold me over until the Pixel 8, and even if I wanted to keep it uh, and on, so maybe even Pixel 9. This got that has three years of software updates and five years of security updates. So this can last me for a while. So uh, again, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want more uh, content, please subscribe. And until next time, this is Tony with Tony's Tippets.